So the next uh, topic in the series is address decoding. And there is basically two ways uh, to decode the address. There is one called full address decoding and the other is called partial address decoding. And what we're trying to do here is, if you recall, we were tr originally when we started doing, you know, uh, composing memory, we said sometimes we need bits to select the chips. Sometimes we need bits to select the byte offset. Sometimes we need bits to indicate which address in the memory we're referring to. So all in all, we will have an X amount or X number of bits that we require to work our um, memory system. Sometimes the address that's coming from the system itself, so for example, like the system comes with 12 bits and your memory only requires 10, hypothetically speaking. Um, so you're not really using all 12 bits of the system. So what do you do with the other two? Well, you can decode the address using these two methods that we were saying, either the full address decoding or the partial address decoding. Uh, another uh, example that we did was uh, when we had a memory system, like a two kilobyte system using 1024 by eight or one kilobyte chips, we ended up with two chips and we needed 10 bits for the first for the addresses and one bit to select either the first or the second chip. So in that, in that case, we need 11 bits. And let's say we have a system that's um, that has like 12 bits or even 16 bits address space. Uh, so what do we do with the remaining bits? Uh, the answer is if you consider all of them, that's called full address decoding. You just have basically to make sure that the other bits are, for example, zero. Um, so you care about bits zero all the way to 11 or zero to 10, which are the first 11 bits. And then the remaining bits, you just need to make sure that they are zero or you can not really include them at all. So what I did here is I kind of uh, drew up the schematic here for a, an eight kilobyte memory system. As you can see, we're using 1024 by eight chips. So each of these chips is one kilobyte. And because they are one kilobyte, we require 10 address bits to actually uh, go through the addresses in the chip. So this A9 down to uh, A9 down to zero is basically the address uh, bits that are used on all these chips. So all of them will share that address space. And then because we have eight uh, chips, we need to select uh, one out of eight. So we need three more bits. Uh, we can draw the logic. That's one way to do it. Or we can just assume we can, uh, basically it will be a decoder logic, right? So you will feed three, uh, it's a three to eight decoder and bits 10 to 12. So A11, A10, A11, A12 will be used to select an individual chip out of these eight. And then when that chip is selected and the address of in that chip is specified, the chip will produce eight bits of data that will go on the data bus. Now we've done this already in the previous couple examples uh, or videos. And uh, what the difference, the difference here is that how much is or how many bits do I have in the system? Well, the answer is uh, it could be any number of bits, but our memory, so this whole thing, these all these chips and their size and whatnot, they require, like this memory system required 13 bits, right? Zero to 12. The first 10 are for the addresses, the remaining three are for uh, the chip select. And if it happens that our system also comes with 13 address bits, then we're we're good. We're you we actually are using a full address decoder in this case. Uh, excuse me, not address decoder. So we are using full address decoding in this case. But let's say the system has 16 bits. So we are using only the first 13 and there is three more bits like left over kind of thing. So the question is what do we do with them? Well the answer is pretty straightforward. I just need to end them basically with uh, those three bits. So again, uh, let's say, so 13 to 16. So we have, um, let me actually just copy this from here and just change those bits. So bits 13, 14 and 15. Um, we need to make sure that they are zero. So they're knotted. 
and then essentially you just end them with the output of the decoder. So I'm going to actually pause the video real quick and add some boxes to indicate the AND gate uh, instead of drawing it by hand, and I will resume that in a second. Okay, so here is the resulting um, logic that I had to add to this. Um, I also annotated the uh, spec of what we're doing here. If you see that uh, we have three more bits, like we said, uh, 13, A13, A14, and A15, they must be zero because our system only requires 13 bits and we're decoding the address um, using full address decoding in this instance or this uh, full address decoding scheme. Um, so it's the same as what we did before. The difference here is that we do care about the most or the remaining bits in the system, like we said, and uh, we need to make sure that the chips are enabled only if these three upper bits are actually zero. So for comparison purposes, uh, you have this one here of uh, using, so it's the same system, same memory system. It's an eight kilobyte using one kilobyte chips in a system with 16 address bit, uh, address bus, 16 bit address bus, actually I should say 16 bit address bus using partial address decoding scheme. So for partial address decoding, um, we, again, we only, uh, we, we kind of, we don't care about the remaining bits. We just care about how many bits we need from the system. In this case, we need 13 bits. So A0 to 9 are being used to address the, uh, to select an address within a chip. Um, and then address bits 10 to 12 are being used uh, as an input to a decoder. And um, that decoder will select one chip out of uh, the eight. On the other hand, if we are using a full address decoding, then we do uh, quote unquote care about the other three bits. We need to make sure they are zero. Uh, our memory system resides in the lower part of the memory. Although we only care about A0 through 12, so the same thing, A0 through nine to select the addresses, 10 to 12 to select the chip uh, in the system. We need to make sure that the remaining bits of the system which are 13, 14, and 15, are zero um, when we are trying to select an address in our memory system here. So all we do is we and you can you can draw the logic if you want, uh, and then uh, we and those uh, three bits, making sure like you know a 13 is zero, 14 is zero, 15 is zero, with every single uh, chip select signal that's coming from the decoder before we actually ship it off to the chip. And here you have it, that's the uh, full address decoding and the uh, partial address decoding. Um, I would like to say a couple of quick things here, just a couple of considerations. Uh, number one is a lot of these, uh, so obviously I did not write the full annotation for these chips. The first input on here, um, these inputs are the address bits, these uh, pins or outputs are the data bits. Uh, those inputs are the chip select, obviously, and then, or the chip enable. Uh, the other thing is, oftentimes you see these chips are actually active low, uh, which means that uh, the chip enable that's coming into these chips must be actually low in order for them to be selected. And if that's the case, uh, you often will see an inverter that's being placed uh, right here. So um, what you need to do is just basically add uh, an inverter and you add it to all these inputs uh, or the inputs of the chip or the outputs of the uh, decoder. So you might see um, sometimes like in the logic, you'll see that these uh, signals that are coming from the decoder or from the logic that you have done, um, they either put a bubble or they put a complete inverter because those chips are active low and in order for them to be selected or in order for the selector to be asserted, um, you need to actually invert the signal. So if you have a logical one coming out of the decoder, um, you can't really just put it into the chip uh, after you end it with the other bits, you uh, need to use a, um, an inverter. Uh, same thing, come, uh, you know, that's, that has nothing to do with whether you're using partial address decoding or full address decoding. Um, you continue, you basically, uh, put an inverter um, as needed. And that's it, that's the difference between full address decoding and partial address decoding. Thank you for watching.